Hello, uh, my name is Venkatesh Thalam, and I'm here to talk about the myth around Go frameworks or libraries. I'll go into what the myth is uh, in a second. So this is a small snapshot of what, I'm, uh, what I'll be talking about. Um, I'll introduce myself and why I'm talking about this topic. Um, what are the es essential components of a microservice and some popular libraries and benchmark against the standard libraries, how they perform. And I'll take any questions at the end. Um, a little introduction, uh, I'm a senior software engineer at Paperless Post. Uh, we use Go in production, uh, microservice architecture, Go, Docker, Kubernetes, Kubernetes you know, the typical stack. Um, all right, so the important question about why I'm talking about this topic. Um, so when you search for Golang Web Frameworks on Google, you know, this is what you see, why I don't use Golang Web, Go, Go Web Frameworks. And there was a recent question posted to Hacker News about what is the current state of web, web frameworks in Golang. And the top quoted comment was, the common reply in the Go community is don't use a framework um, or roll out your own. So uh, this is what I uh, came across in real life too, like people telling me you stick with standard libraries. I mean, I know that makes sense because like Go has like really good standard libraries. Like you can go production ready with uh, just the standard libraries. Uh, but when I started researching more, uh, I found few frameworks or libraries, which I thought would really help speed up your development and also actually perform faster than the st uh, standard libraries. So I'll discuss the uh, standard libraries in three categories. Like before that, uh, like if you think about a microservice which serves REST API, what does it usually constitute? You have a HTTP server which does routing for you. Um, you have JSON serialization, deserialization, and some business logic, um, and a database layer. Uh, of course, there's auth and logging and other things. Um, like, I'll discuss some libraries in routing, JSON packages, and database layer, uh, assuming you will do the you know best of best big O for your business logic. So. Uh, a little information about what I ran benchmarks on is just, I just ran on my uh, uh, MacBook. Um, I use Go 1.11 uh, um, version. And um, if you don't know already, Go has like a really good uh, inbuilt benchmarking system. So if you run Go test hyphen bench and where your benchmarking uh, test file exists, it will give you info detailed uh, benchmarking. Um, so by default, the benchmark will run for a second, but you can um, control it about how long you want to run it by specifying the bench time flag. Um, if you have a, if you're running a faster library versus a slower library, uh, the number of uh, operations per, the number of uh, cycles for faster and slower will dif differentiate. So if you run for a standard 10, 20 seconds, then you will see a aggregated uh, benchmarking result. Uh, starting with routing, um, Go has a really good, again, HTTP server uh, built in, production ready. Um, it works really great. Uh, just that block of code will give you a HTTP server, uh, serves an endpoint. Um, but what happens when you have a, um, an API which has like a nested sub resources, like you have a, uh, you want to go restful on your URL, you have a student's resource and you have great sub resource and you want to use name parameters. Uh, that's when the standard library starts failing. Um, so people end up using um, other alternatives if they want to use name parameters. So there are tons, tons of alternatives um, to the native HTTP router. Um, Jin, Echo, Bigo, Gorilla Max, Goji are some of the popular ones according to the GitHub stars. Um, most of these libraries, uh, based on the benchmarks, benchmarks I ran, uh, um, take less memory footprint than the standard HTTP package. So I ran some benchmarks for um, these libraries. It's difficult to read, um, but this is how the output looks. I have some bar charts which display the information better. Uh, but if you see, this is a uh, um, per uh, operation uh, time, which is in nanoseconds, and the memory taken. And that the second column represents the number of cycles it ran for. So if you look at uh, the benchmarking for uh, these libraries, uh, Jin uh, framework has like, it performs the fastest if you have a single name parameter. Um, there is the closest second is echo and there's a package called HTTP router. 
Uh, the funny part is like Jin framework uses HTTP router uh, internally. Uh, Jin is a full blown framework, but then they optimize it. So uh, it performs better than the actual package out there. Um, so, you know, yeah, as, as you can see, the slowest thing is Gorilla Max. Um, and if you have fine name parameters, let's say you're going full restful, you have like really a lot of sub resources and you have fine name parameters. This is how it performs. Again, Jin performs better than the rest of the um, frameworks. Okay, JSON packages. So um, if you go any language, uh, if you go, you start using any language, you have to use Jackson or JSON or some other JSON packages, but Go comes with a really good encoding package. Um, it has, it supports JSON, XML, CSV out of the box. You don't need uh, any uh, other package if you want to start using a HTTP service, which, which serves JSON. Um, so, but I started just looking at the alternatives, like what other libraries exist in the ecosystem, just to see, you know, how they perform and, you know, like what do they support? Um, usually you have two kinds of things, like um, you might be uh, calling a HTTP service where you know how the response would look like. And there are uh, certain times where you access Twitter API or, you know, Microsoft Bing API, and uh, they change the responses and you don't want your API to break or your code to break when they change the responses. So what you can do is apparently you can pass the JSON and get only the fields you want. Um, so there, these are the two types of packages, uh, JSON editor and easy JSON uh, will perform just like uh, the standard JSON package, like where you know um, the in incoming uh, request type. And if you don't know, and if you just want to pass the unstructured JSON, you don't know about the structure of the JSON, you can use something like JSON parser and gaps. Um, RAN benchmarks again for uh, standard package versus the other two, which supports the uh, structured JSON. And it's, it's not really, this is for encoding by the way, this is not really far off, um, but still easy JSON performs like little faster than the standard package and the next one is JSON iter. But if you go to decoding, um, you see there is a 5x difference in between um, JSON iter and the standard package. Like let's say you have a huge JSON coming your way in a queue or in, uh, as a HTTP request and you want to decode it first, deserialize it. And uh, if you use JSON iter, you, it performs five times better. All right, the next layer. Uh, databases. So like you go to again, any other language ecosystem, you um, use some, some kind of ORM. ORM is a object relational mapper. Basically it maps your tables to uh, your class or structure, you know, whatever um, uh, your data represents. Um, if you use Java, you have Hibernate, Rails uses Active Record, Django uses Django, Django ORM, but does Go need it? Uh, again, Go have a really good database package just with the standard database package, you can um, start using, connecting to any database and all, do all your basic CRUD operations. Um, but I was just again looking for alternatives about what other things exist in the in our ecosystem. Um, some options are GOM and GoPG. Um, I mean, there are like probably like 20 other libraries which I don't even know of. But when I was like in my limited research, I came across, according to the GitHub stars and um, number of contributors and stuff, these st stood out. Uh, this, is, this is one of the benchmark I ran against the standard package. And SQLX is like another package which is really famous in the you know, ecosystem. Uh, the standard package, what it does is like you have 10,000 rows um, in a database and you're, and you're querying them. Uh, you have a row level scan, like you read a row and then you have to map each field to a, a temporary variable and then assign it to a struct. That's what uh, standard package allows us to do. But with SQLX, you can do a row struct scan, basically mapping each row to one of your struct uh, variable. So uh, GOM is a full blown ORM, supports migrations and uh, does some fancy stuff, uh, but it's really slow. Um, and GoPG is one uh, thing I found out. It actually surprisingly uh, performs faster than the database package and SQLX. Uh, this is again uh, a query uh, to a table which has 200,000 records. Uh, I, did a, I did only uh, an insert and a, 
uh, a select uh, benchmark, and they bo both kind of perform in the similar way. I didn't do update delete. Um, so if, if you're looking for a, um, ORM uh, where you don't, where you're lazy, you don't want to write SQL, um, or you're rolling out a side project, you don't want to write like a repeated CRUD operations, you know, five times if you have five different, you know, entities in your uh, project, then you can just probably like go use go pg or something um, which basically reduces the number of lines you write uh, also gives you the performance uh, assuming the benchmarking code is good uh, perform performs better than the standard package of course there are caveats um, like like people wants to use standard libraries because the reliability you get uh, the testability um, you can easily test the code you write with standard packages um, if you are using some new hot library uh, which says you know i'm giving you like 60 percent performance improvements but you don't but the guy has like so busy with his work and he can't support the library then you go end up uh, being uh, you know forking the project and uh, spending some time to you know do your do your own thing again like you have to basically support your project and assuming if it's big then you're really screwed unless you want to migrate and spend some time and start going probably like to a new framework or go to a standard package. So you have to see what your project is, like how big your project, what's, what is important to you, uh, development time versus speed of your uh, API, uh, things like that before apparently deciding on some, some libraries. Again, long-term support. Uh, if someone doesn't, doesn't support uh, an awesome library, again, it's, it's going to be difficult to use in production. Um, generic interfaces, the standard database package gives you a generic interface. You can switch uh, the, the backend database. If you're using Postgres, you want to use uh, MySQL, then you can just switch the database on the backend and your interface uh, remains the same with standard packages. But if you start using some other third party library, which doesn't uh, give you that abstraction where you just use a um, you know, methods, API, uh, but it doesn't give you the abstraction, then uh, you'll have to write per uh, database code and you don't want to write that, right? So these are the uh, um, obvious caveats if, if you're thinking to st start using any of these libraries. Um, resources, again, uh, there are like really th literally thousands of uh, libraries in Go, although the language seems to be like pretty you know, new comparing to probably like Java and Python. Um, this is one repo I found out, like there are like uh, literally thousand, more than thousand libraries uh, listed by category. So if you're looking for some new uh, library to use, or if you're looking for some inspiration to start working on new libraries, uh, this is one place to go. So the benchmarking code for this, which I, I use this for the presentation, I'm going to share soon, probably like I'll share with Wilken and and he'll, he can show, probably share it with you, but this is how it looks like. You have a, a benchmarking cat categorized by the things I showed. Um, 